Good afternoon and welcome to Aluna's inaugural 2022 Community Conversation, Breaking the Cycle of Addiction Through Mentorship. Thanks to all of you for joining us today and thanks to all of our incredible panelists and moderator. Uh, we know it's going to be a great discussion. Our mission at Aluna is to support children and families impacted by grief and addiction. So for the past 20 years, through our two signature camp programs, Camp Erin and Camp Mariposa, our network of 50 camps and partners throughout the US and Canada, we have served hundreds of thousands of families along with our Luna Resource Center and our Luna Cares Care Package Program and Team Jesse Military Support. We are thrilled today um, to introduce you uh, to many of our camp mentors, directors, and community leaders for this critical conversation. Our goal today is really to let everybody know um, what a marked difference you can make in a, child life, a child's life and the importance of mentorship in breaking the cycle of addiction. We'd like to kick off the panel today with a brief video from one of our Camp Mariposa Sarasota alumna uh, and now camp mentor, Kaya. I never knew what that day was going to hold. I never knew what mood she was going to be in, who was going to be at our house, if she would even be home, you know, if she was going to be angry or if she was going to be nice. It was always very just kind of see how it goes, have your guard up either way. When my dad moved down, it was a big learning process going from a super unhealthy environment to more of a stable one. And in the fourth grade, I opened up to my teacher. Somehow she was connected to JFCS and gave me a piece of paper. Uh, talked about camp and had camp dates on it and I brought it home. The first time I saw Kaya, she was one of these kids that had that it factor. Even back then was always a leader. Growing up in a family where there's addiction, the biggest rule is don't talk about it, don't trust anybody and like tiptoe. You know, you don't want anyone to know you're upset. As soon as I was able to understand that a lot of the other kids were going through something very similar and that the adults were not there to hurt me, or to make me feel less than they were there to bring me up and just give me love, I opened right up. By the end of my first camp, I was in love with the people here and just how welcoming and loving everybody was. July 31st of 2019, she overdosed. Once she died, I was able to create my own identity. I was able to figure out who I was and what I wanted to do and the person I wanted to become outside of my relationship with her. I heard about Kaya's situation, about her mother passing, and, um, and I reached out to her. My dream was always to have her come back as a mentor. And if a connection of I'm here, you know, you're not alone, can make that happen, it's going to make it happen. When she said that, I was like, really? Me? You know, do you think? I can do that. And she was like, absolutely. From the moment I met you, I knew you had something special and that you could give back to people in similar situations. So hearing that felt really good and gave me the confidence to come do this. But for these kids coming into the program, to see somebody making positive life choices, taking control of their life and carrying on with it and making it their own, having been where they were, you can't teach, you know, you can't teach that, you know, so she is the best role model for our kids. I think just knowing I'm making a difference in these kids' lives and letting them know that even though it's challenging right now and they can't really see the light at the end of the tunnel, that it's there and seeing that one day when they're old enough, they can go create their own identity in their own life. I'm just really glad I can be that role model for them. Kaya is truly a role model, um, and so I hope you found a little piece of what camp is like in that video. And now it's my pleasure to introduce you to our moderator today, Jennifer Lewis Hall. Uh, Jennifer is with PHL 17 here in Philadelphia. And I'm going to read from this because she's so impressive, I don't want to miss anything. Uh, she is the host and producer of PHL 17's public affairs program, In Focus which I encourage you to watch. Um, and she's built an exceptional career in network TV and multimedia, where she shines a spotlight on issues impacting our community, such as addiction. In 2022, Jennifer was awarded the Pennsylvania Broadcasters Award for Outstanding Television Feature Story 
for two women on the front lines of the opioid epidemic. She holds a master's degree in journalism from Northwestern University's Medill School of Journalism and a bachelor's degree in economics and finance from Douglas College of Rutgers University. For over two decades, I know she doesn't look like she's been working that long, um, she has been an accomplished and outstanding journalist, receiving many awards and accolades, including the Camden County Medal of Freedom in 2021. She is passionate about helping children and is the author of three books, including her latest children's story, The Tale of the Sly Mongoose, Bianca and the Anguilla Island Adventures. So she's obviously a busy woman, so we're honored that she was able to join us today. So please join me in welcoming Jennifer Lewis Hall. Mary, thank you so very much. It is a, a pleasure, it is an honor to be here uh, with all of the panelists. I am so uh, thankful that you were actually able to join me on one of my uh, In Focus shows. And I just wanted to say that listening to Kaya and listening to that video clip um, is something that is so important to me as we lift up each other and we lift up communities. Um, my very own father was in law enforcement and spent an entire career uh, working for the Drug Enforcement Administration. And we oftentimes would talk about issues involving education and prevention. Um, and so I'm so honored to be here and to be able to have uh, lend a voice to the community. We have some distinguished guests with us today. I want to just read a little bit about each of them and then we're going to jump into our discussion. I wanna start with Wendy Berkshire. Wendy is the Prevention Services Coordinator and Camp Mariposa Dayton Director at West Care East End Community Services. Uh, now the Dayton program was launched uh, in July of 2018 and now includes three cohorts of camps serving 65 plus youth and 22 mentors. So we definitely are so very glad that she is with us today. Stephen White, uh, Camp Mariposa, Nashua Mentor at Boys and Girls Club of Greater Nashua. Uh, welcome to our panelists as well, photographer and active member of uh, in Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, Stephen is a small business owner and contributor to Getty Images, a member of Toastmasters as well. So we want to welcome him today. Emily Stout is also with us, Camp Mariposa Chicago mentor uh, at Northwestern Settlement. She graduated from the University of Illinois Urbana. Champagne with a Bachelor of Science degree in Industrial Organizational Psychology and is currently a grad student at Purdue University working toward a master's degree. So congratulations to you as well. And Reverend Dr. Lorena Marshall Blake is also with us. Uh, it, it, look around and I know you'll say, I recognize that name, I recognize that face. So glad that she could be with us today as well. She is a president at Independence Blue Cross Foundation, uh, serves as the president uh, of the foundation, in addition to all the other things that she finds time to do, an associate minister at the Vine Memorial Baptist Church in Philadelphia, and she is affiliated get this everyone, with more than 30 professional and civic organizations uh, and many, many awards that she has received. So, you know, many of us know that um, over the past few years, we have been in it, we have lived it ourselves. The pandemic has shown an ever larger spotlight on substance use disorder. Here in Philadelphia, uh, 2020, that particular year had the second highest Let's say that again, the second highest number of overdose deaths reported with 1,214 people passing away. So we wanna talk about this issue. What can we, uh, how we can be a community partner and a community voice and raise awareness about uh, the many things that are helping people in our community. So we're gonna have an opportunity for some questions as well, but I really want to give Wendy an opportunity to take the first question. Uh, Wendy, if you would, that we're gonna talk about today, can you briefly describe uh, Camp Mariposa, the program and how mentoring is incorporated into the program model? Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. I'll, I'll be as brief as I can. Um, camp Mariposa, um, as was mentioned, is a, a national camp uh, located all over the country, 18 different locations, and it's geared for children who've been impacted by substance use disorder in their lives. Um, it could be um, a parent, it could be a grandparent, it could be an aunt and uncle, 
Um, what makes Camp Mariposa unique is a lot of things. And one is that it's a year round camp and um, that we go for full weekends. Uh, each camp goes six times a year. Um, and it's a group mentoring based model. So um, a lot of mentoring situations are one on one, um, but uh, Camp Mariposa is is a group. So it's a group of mentors that are um, involved in every camp weekend. Um, and the camp itself is an opportunity for children to learn that they're not alone in their stories. Um, everybody's story is different, but that is the common thread in that they're not alone in that. And then camp also helps provide um, protective factors in their lives. It, we do things to grow resiliency in the children. Um, and most importantly, it's an opportunity to build healthy um, relationships and connections with mentors who serve as positive role models in their life. I'm looking at Emily as I'm saying that. Um, and experience nature and the fun experiences of camp. And you know, we're super lucky that um, we, Claudia Black designed the seven C's of addiction. And that's really what formulates what we do at a camp weekend. And the seven C's are the first three are, I didn't cause it, I can't control it, and I can't cure it. And the it is the addiction in a child's life. Children who grow up with a family with substance use disorder believe that somehow it's their fault. Um, but what we focus on at camp is the but. And the next four is are I can take care of myself by communicating my feelings, making good choices, and celebrating myself. These are the focus on the health, the healthy coping skills. And what I want to add uh, finally is that we like to say at camp that there's an eighth C and the eighth one is community. And that's really where the role of mentors at camp are seen. They're responsible. They are the heart of how we build community with campers. Um, because as Kaya said in the video, um, children who grow up with substance use disorders and their families learn not to talk about it, not to trust others, and to not share their feelings. And mentors help build that community and a space for campers where they can, um, they grow in their trust and it's a safe place to talk about the hard things and to communicate their feelings. And what we like to say is that we want children to grow up to be their best selves. Um, because the last thing I'll say is right now is that the opposite of addiction is connection. And that's what we're doing at camp is connection. That is beautiful connection. And I think you would say community also, Wendy, as you said, I use that word. That's really what this is about, this community um, and also the broader community and supporting one another. I want to just slide in another question to you very quickly. Sure. Um, if you could just as a program director talk about the importance of creating a safe place, a safe space that is supportive um, for youth. It's, it's absolutely critical. I don't believe that we would have the successes that we're having at camp with the kids um, if we didn't, if we weren't creating a safe space for them. And, and you know, a lot of youth are coming from um, chaotic situations and chaos at their homes. And also the thing that we've learned, Jennifer, is that, you know, children aren't talking about these things with their peers at school. You know, they're not sharing what's really going on or the hard things that they're experiencing. And so to create a safe space for that to happen, where they're supported, where they're, they know that they can trust others, that they're not going to share their story, that their story is safe in that space. Um, one of our campers, we always call it our safe circle. And one of our campers, he's a he's a, an OG, as they call him, the original. He uh, raised his hand a couple uh, years ago and said, "You know, Miss Wendy, this really is the brave space." And 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 oh my gosh, you know, right out of right out of of uh, there. So so creating that safe, brave space is where you know healing and hope can start. And like Kaya, you know, said in the video, that's where they learned that there's no judgment on the person in their lives that has struggled with substance use disorder. There's no judgment there. They can learn how to make healthy choices and learn coping skills so that they can grow to be their best selves. 
So beautiful and so very important. I want to get now to the rest of our panelists that I want to direct this really to Emily and Steve as we talk about um, both of them being involved for a number of years. Emily, I'm going to take you first. Uh, tell us a, a little bit about, a little bit more about your involvement, the importance for you of mentoring and supporting uh, our youth. And also, you know, as you've been so incredibly involved, um, how has this kept you very fulfilled and what do you feel is the most important message to others? Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. So I started at Camp Mariposa in 2019. So I've been with the program for a while. I'm out of the Chicagoland area camp. And I think one of the most important things at camp is kind of what Wendy said. And I want to echo that idea of creating a safe place where you feel safe and encouraged by people that they trust and they know that are there to support them. And I think camp does a great job of doing that through our letter writings to addiction where kids have the opportunity to write to addiction about those feelings that they have towards it. And then they have that safe place where they can let those feelings go and continue to grow and connect with others that can also relate to them. And I feel like that just keeps me coming back. Um, I love being with the youth. I love moments where if one mentor can't show up for a month, the kids are right on top of it, asking where that person is, why they aren't there. And just knowing that these kids look forward to the camp weekends and they look forward to what Wendy said, that safe kind of calming place instead of maybe a chaotic environment that they're usually in. And it's a nice getaway where they know they're supported and understood and we can just help them grow and celebrate their successes which is one of the seven c's that we just talked about and just overall that positive environment like one of my favorite stories is i had a camper tell me that i was their first friend so i feel like going back to your question about what fulfills me is knowing that if i can even just help one youth and be a friend to somebody then like I'm sold, I want to be a part of it and I want to keep coming back. So that's kind of where camp is special to my heart. Wow, that's so that's so incredible. And and Steve, please jump in here. Tell us a bit more about your involvement um, and what has kept you so focused on this mission and why it's so very important. Uh, thank you again, uh, Jennifer. Uh, Part of it is, is is understanding, you know, more so what I put my own children through, through my active use, and so it's it's helped me learn a lot, um, you know, with the children that come in now and, and and seeing, okay, this is just one more thing that I can do to kind of change those behaviors that I had, and. Um, and a lot like what Emily said, it's when you see that change in their in in, in their face, and, and they come to you, and they they're like, they just want to hug you when you when you first walk in there. It's just like wow. It's like uh, you don't really realize it when you're not there until you show up for camp, and they're all just like Steve, you know that kind of stuff. And um, you know, it's 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 definitely tremendous. It's it's helped me a lot in in healing, you know, my own stuff and uh, understanding also, you know, and, and helping them understand that, you know, what the, um, what's, you know, understanding what substance use is, you know, and that it's not their fault. And that they, uh, when, when they have some sort of, uh, say, negative attitude towards it, it's like, let's, you know, let's just try to understand that, you know, and being in recovery myself, I'm able to just say, okay, well, this is, this is kind of what goes on in, in, in my mind, you know, or went on in my mind kind of thing. And they're like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Or I didn't think of it that way, you know, kind of thing. So. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing um, your personal account and the impact on you. Uh, and allowing others to have that safe, as you all have mentioned so candidly, safe space and safe place. Uh, very important community conversations we're having here today. Uh, we referenced how the opioid uh, epidemic, uh, as it has been called, uh, has impacted so many people and 
their families. And so we want to really bring Lorena into this conversation because she plays a vital role in the aspect of healthcare, mentoring, and support. And so, Lorena, I want to just ask you, I mean, certainly uh, at PHL 17, I just executive produced and anchored um, the show that we won that award for that we'll get in May. It's not about awards, however, it's about impact and change. And uh, that was called What Every Family Needs to Know, PHL 17 and Focus, What Every Family Needs to Know About Opioids and Having These Conversations. Can you talk about the opioid crisis, its impact in Philadelphia, um, and especially how it has impacted communities and communities of color. Great. Uh, again, thanks so much, Jennifer, for giving us the opportunity um, to have this community conversation, because I think it's so important. I think, again, as we look at the opioid crisis, the fatal drug doses nationwide have surged during the pandemic. The pandemic has only as exacerbated, according to data uh, from the CDC and others. Again, a growing number of studies show, especially uh, that Black communities experience rates higher than other groups. And then you had uh, stated uh, statistic earlier. And again, I think I heard recently that over it during the pandemic, it's increased over 2,000%. So, I mean, that is just staggering. But in, in specifically in Black communities, high quality affordable treatment options remain scarce, or really in some cases they're not even existent. And they're referred to as treatment deserts. So, and when you think of those two words together, treatment and desert, and a desert is always a, 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 a place or space that there's nothing there. Uh, again, but I get excited about what the foundation has been able to do. Uh, we created a more inclusive treatment and recovery environment through our, uh, it's called a STOP program or someone you know, anti-stigma campaign. Uh, again, one of the things that we talk about is changing the narrative about addiction, okay? Uh, in other words, when people go through that, again, it's a, it, I remember a young guy who said, he, he said, we're not bad people trying to be good. We're just sick people trying to get well. So again, it's changing that whole narrative. But what we've been able to do is we're all also leading the expansion of the region's collegiate, collegiate recovery program and its addiction recovery programs on college campuses, uh, including a new grant that we just did to the Community College of Philadelphia to reach Latinx and other diverse communities in student bodies. And then we also have this partnership, and again, we'll talk about that later, um, where we did a grant for a Black Patient Scholarship Fund at the Karen Treatment Center, which is one of the most well-known treatment centers in the nation. And in collaboration with, again, CBOs, community-based organizations, we don't do it by ourselves, a group called ODAT, or one day at a time to help black patients and their families access world-class substance use disorder. So in other words, I call it leveling the playing field, irregardless of what your economic status is, that you should be able to get quality treatment. treatment. And again, we continue to address the stigma of addiction through someone you know. And last year, we relaunched the campaign with a focus on black and brown communities. And we also have a podcast. So we're, which is in uh, 48 states, it's also international. So again, getting the word out, I think that's key, whether it's social media, podcast, it's important that people know, making them aware of, of what is affecting our communities. Well, that is powerful. And you talked about groups like ODAD and so many yes. others that are entrenched in the community. Um, even before we probably knew each other, we've heard of these names uh, of organizations. And I do want to thank all, all of these organizations that do so much uh, in the community, because from what I'm hearing from you, uh, Lorena, is that it takes, therefore, a community effort. There it is. It's community, community, community. I don't mean to be redundant, but that's exactly what it is. And we're, and I think more importantly, as I look at all of us that are on this panel today, we're in this together. We're in, and we're and working together and pulling together that we'll be able to take it to the next level and really help and assist people. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, well, uh, there's something I do want to ask you about those partnerships. So we'll be coming sure. back and talking about that as time permits. So stay right where you are because um, there's so much we can glean from what you're saying. Um, also, Wendy, want to get to you. I want to talk about the reason why we're on here. What role mentors play in creating community? 
Well, as I, I think I mentioned earlier, they are absolute key. Um, when we were talking before we started, Stephen and Emily and I were, um, you know, they're thanking me for being a director and it's, you know, it's really just a, it's a privilege to be a director. And I can, I can imagine and create community, but it won't happen unless all of the mentors are a part of that building of community also. And, you know, and it happens with, individual interactions. It happens when we're talking about things as a whole group and supporting one another as a whole group. It's uh, showing up. You know, it's it's showing up is, I don't think can be um, ever minimized. You know, the the three C's of a, of a mentor, are, you know, commitment, inconsistency, and connection. And to me, those are the three C's. We're just throwing a bunch of C's out here, you guys. But, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> sorry. And I, I'm with you, Dr. Lorena. I'm, you know, all about community and, you know, connection. Um, and so because of those three C's of, of a mentor, that's what builds community. And that's what helps the kids come back again and again and again. And even though it feels like, you know, two months apart is a long time, um, we literally, and I'm sure it's this way in Nashua and this way in Indianapolis and this way in Chicago, everywhere there's a camp. When the kids come back, the, it's like there was no time that was missed. And it's because we've created an expectation of inclusion and an expectation of, mm. of support. So it's What just, would you say then, Wendy, also the role that families play um, in the mentoring model, because um, I'm hearing, I love the the idea of the C's. You guys are throwing out these, and I thought about care. I thought about communication. Mm -hmm. So all of that has my mind just so uh, involved. And in, wow, look at all the things as you go down. I think you have seven. You you gave us. We may end up with fourteen today. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Well, um, you know, families. I'm well, families, um, and I know all the camp programs are this way, but, you know, we, we obviously focus on the youth uh, in the camp weekends, um, but it, it grows outside of just the, the campers and that weekend. We build in space and time and connection with the families. We have activities in between camps that um, that the mentors are involved in and the families are involved in an opportunity for them to create, here we are, more community, really create community amongst each other also. And I mean, not to just talk about Dayton, but we, we here are also doing um, classes, you know, a family education to help strengthen the families and help build on their, uh, you know, communication skills and, and to understand, you know, substance use disorders themselves. Um, and so the family is, they, they have, they have to be invested. Um, mm -hmm. We invest in the, in the youth and the families are invested back and that's when there's success. And we're going to come back to you because there's a very important question I want to get to you and Dr. Lorena on, but I want to get Emily and Steve back in here. Um, you know, as you think about working with, with youth and the impact that this has on their future, um, Emily, I'm going to just have you uh, speak with us again next and then, and then Steve. Um, you know, what is one tip that you have for people, perhaps, that are, you know, interested in supporting youth affected really by substance use disorder. I'd like to hear from, from both of you. And Emily, can you tell us? Yeah, my number one tip would be to be passionate. Kind of what yes. Wendy said about showing up. I feel like that is the most important thing to do for youth is to show up, be present, show that you care and that you're listening and that you're invested in their future. I mean, our kids will come to camp and they'll be telling us where they applied to high school and if they got in and they'll ask for guidance on that. And it's really them telling us their achievements and their successes and us encouraging them to keep chasing after those goals and their dreams. And I feel like we do that by showing up and being passionate. Personally, for me, I'm not um, in like a human services background, but I and passionate about helping youth. So I don't think that it should be education or past experience that stops someone from mentoring. If you care about youth and care about helping people with substance abuses, then you're 
like that's all you need. You can be a mentor that helps those children grow and develop into a future that they're excited about. Great. And Steve, tell us your perspective as well. Um, what would be a, a tip that you have for people interested in supporting youth who are also impacted? Uh, I would say almost exactly what Emily said, like just <laughs> show up, like show up, get involved. It's so easy to get involved. Uh, I, like I said, it's just, it's literally that simple. Like take that step. I, I had a, a gentleman who reached out to me yesterday and was asking me how he could donate to a charity. And I said, you know what? Go, go volunteer. Mm. You know, that's what it was taught to me. You know, and, and early on, they said, you know how to, you know, help you get through this, go volunteer, you know, and it started with doing that for me. That's what changed my life. Mm. You know, in, in early recovery, it was go volunteer at a soup kitchen, go volunteer, help feed the homeless, get outside of yourself, yes. you know, you know, because there's so much more than just monetary you know, that you can, anybody can write a check, but it's just both like, go show up, show up. To both of us. And, and would you say, Steve, and, you know, anyone else who wants to jump in here on yes. this question? <laughs> we both do. Am yeah. I hearing you, Wendy? Am I also hearing you? And Lorena, um, both of us. <laughs> yeah, and Lorena, jump in, guys. I was just going to say, sometimes it's even doing something that's small. I think people sometimes think, yeah. you know, or we can all sometimes think, right? That, that yeah. may, maybe it means a direct donation Maybe it means, you know, money, but I, I feel like our time and efforts or a talent we have or sure. an ability we have is so valuable. Wendy yeah. and then Lorena. Okay, go ahead, Wendy. <laughs> you sure you want me to go first? Okay. Well, so I, I'll let you go. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. So I have, I have like two things. So the show up is so clear and, mm -hmm. and, and being present, like Emily said, um, but I want to also kind of just add, and I don't know whether we want to talk about this later, but the mentors that are involved in camp are highly trained yes. and they go through a lot of important training. They go through, you know, trauma informed training. They, we learn uh, because I think all of us are in the helping field. Yes. And so those first three C's are really important. You know, that we can't change, we can't control a child's life and what their situation is. We can't cure it, which is, you know, the fixing part. Um, but what we can do, and then, you know, we go, we are really careful about what we can do um, because you got to be really careful to have really good boundaries with that situation. Um, and now all of a sudden, Lorena, I forgot what the second part well, was. Well, see, and I'm going to jump in. You go I jump in. When I hear what you said, Steve said, and also Emily, and especially in dealing with, with the young people, and that um, I've often said, don't tell me you care, show me you care. Yeah. And I think, again, that's what your mentors are doing. And, and again, it makes me think of um, one of my heroes, uh, Dr. Maya Angelou, who says people won't remember what you said. They won't remember what you did, but they will always remember how you made them feel. And our mentors are making them feel special. They're valuable. They have a voice. And, and I just believe that is just so important. And young people know when you're telling the truth. Absolutely. I mean, when you are be, but be when your you're authentic being genuine. self. Yes. Okay. All right. I know that wasn't my question, but I just needed to jump in. <laughs> oh, Jennifer, you muted. I think, oh, here we go. I think that, um, cause I was so, I said, wow, this is so good. I better, before I jump in, I better cut my own self off. Um, I think that everyone, it, it's this passion. I would also add to folks that sometimes you don't even know it's there until you have an inkling and you go out and you try it. And then all of a sudden, I always say that it has a wonderful, it's a wonderful spirit to helping. Um, it, it also increases the level of, uh, I don't know about endorphins, but it sure does feel yes. good to the body. <laughs> yeah. yes. Would you agree? I always yes. say do something for someone and you will be surprised, you know, how, how good, um, how good it feels. Yeah. I know that someone did have a question. So keep thinking of your questions, folks, um, because we're going to have a time to delve into some of them. I will take one right now before I lose track of it. Um, there is a question about how to talk to kids about uh, a parent's substance use disorder. Um, and, and very sadly, um, should it result in an overdose death? That is one of the questions we got. Wendy, I'm going to ask you to speak to that. 
Yeah, you know, that happens often at camp. And um, I think our first level is that we always make sure that um, everybody understands that there's no judgment about the situation. That's really key. Yeah. Um, and so the language that, you know, oftentimes kids just have too much knowledge and too much information, and then they carry that responsibility. And so we don't want to add to that. So we have to be really careful in helping them see that, um, that, you know, it, we can talk about it as a disease. That's a, that's a hard, a hard level, but we do that at camp. We talk about, you know, the addiction as a disease. Um, we also help the, the youth understand that, you know, possibly it was, it was that they didn't have their their loved one didn't have the coping skills that they needed to deal with the hard things in their life and um and that that's and then we focus it back onto the youth we say this is why we teach you know we teach you these meditative things this is why we teach you you know all the i'll teach them about their brain and how we go from our downstairs brain to our upstairs brain with you know breathing skills and coping skills because life is hard and you know everybody's life is hard and it's it's um how we can respond to it instead of react to it right. and so we you know so i'm not i hope that that helps i certainly would have a it bigger does. conversation with anybody that needed to mm -hmm. um but I think if we can acknowledge, you know, the pain of that situation and then help the youth, the child move into what are the healthy choices that you can make? Um, I had a, a camper say to me a couple of weeks ago, he said, um, and I'll be surprised if I can get through this without tearing up. But he said, um, Miss Wendy, I just we we just love camp. Just thank you so much for camp. And. And I said, and he's like, we'll never be able to thank you enough for this space. And I said, you know how you can thank us, the mentors? I said, mm -hmm. by growing up to be your best self. There then we is. know we did our jobs. That's really beautiful. I have a uh, question to come back to you on, Wendy. I want to get over to Dr. Dr. Lorena here. Um, very important. We mentioned the word earlier about partnerships. And I don't know how we can do so many of the things we do in our communities without each other. Can you elaborate on that uh, yes. for us in your work at, uh, at IBX at the foundation? And especially with regard to um, the issue at large is the opioid crisis. Absolutely. Thank, thanks again, Jen. And that what makes, I think, again, our foundation unique are the incredible relationships. I often laugh and say, I'm R&B. No, I'm not rhythm and blues. I'm a relationship builder. OK, so it's all about building relationships and cultivating them. And again, our work is much broader. It's easy to write the check, but it, but it's more important that I tell people I don't want to date you. I want a marriage. How do we work together? And when do you mention early? Not one shot something that's long standing that builds on it. So again, it's broader than the grant make it informs but and the one that informs us the most with these partnerships are our stakeholders and we go full circle and that comes back to community. It's all about we, you don't know what you don't know and never assume that you know until you sit and listen. Uh, again, I mentioned earlier uh, the Black Patient Scholarship Fund, which was a great example of a partnership. It came out of a conversation. I was just talking to the head of the Karen Foundation and I said, you know what? What are you doing? Because they're out in Wernersville. I mean, they're way out there. And people of color don't get out to Wernersville. Not usually. I know I didn't until I took a special trip. But then we worked out an opportunity where we got folks involved. And they're, they, they now are out on campus and, and experiencing the, the treatment that Karen has to offer. And again, the grant funding awarded by the Foundation for Scholarships, we did have and Karen did have. So again, people were willing to bring the dollars because, you know, whether we admit it or not, dollars are important and what we're doing. So again, get those partners who can come to the table and say, I will do this, I'll do that. And again, it goes back to, it's not just, it's dollars, it's time, treasury, talent, okay? Put all of it together and you can have a program that really works and that makes a difference. But it's partnerships on purpose, with purpose, mm. for the purpose of the of of alumni 
and the great work that they're doing. So again, they are a great partner for us and we love working with them. So uh, that's so well said. So well said. Um, Thank you for that. And I love that this is on purpose, doing things on purpose. Uh, For folks who are able to look at the chat, uh, there is some information because Wendy addressed a very, very important question. And that question uh, regarding how to talk to uh, youth, how to talk to your children, uh, particularly about the the subject and should they lose a loved one. Uh, Many layers, Uh, Wendy addressed what we could address here, but there's some important information in the chat. So we wanna make sure that people see those links to resources at Aluna. Uh, Also uh, talking about, um, you know, ways to frame conversations. Uh, So some very, very good information, right? Because resources uh, is part of the reason why we're talking um, here today as as well. Uh, Wendy, a question I wanted to ask you about, which is so important and really a core part of why we're here. Uh, talk a little bit with us about the success of the program uh, and what it's uh, doing in terms of breaking the cycle of addiction. Well, I think one of the ways you can see the success of, of Camp Mariposa around, around the country is how it's grown. That, you know, I, I know in four years time, that I've been involved. Um, I think we started with uh, 10 or 12 camps. And and so I know Brian will, you know, I don't have the statistic, Brian, sorry, really well, but, uh, you know, we're up to 18 camps and, you know, outside of the country in Toronto now. Um, And I think you can also see the success by, uh, so not only numbers of camps, but the number of campers that are involved. Mary spoke to those numbers at the beginning. And also um, the, um, you know, that the, that the kids and the mentors, you know, that, that they keep coming back, that it's not, it's not a big in and out door. It's, it's, an, it's obviously an investment on their part to be involved, but, you know, once they're in, then you see like Kaya at the beginning, she started as a camper. She came up through, she had a rough patch. Jeanette's an amazing mentor to her, helped her become a mentor herself. There's a full cycle there, just a full cycle. Um, And so I know the other thing is the percentages. We track percentages through our LSU surveys on um, how many, the percentage of youth who are not participating early with drug experimentation and alcohol. That's a big, a big goal of Mariposa. And um, also we have great percentages on um, those not involved in the juvenile justice system, which is another big uh, factor. So all of those statistics are really strong in the camp program. We um, have you know, some comments coming through the chat. We want to invite people to uh, put their questions uh, through the chat. Someone's receiving those for us and they're coming to me. So we appreciate that. Remember, this is a community conversation. It takes all of us and imagine what we can do together. I love saying that. Uh, one comment from someone who had joined us via chat uh, talked about their grandchildren uh, being involved in Camp Mariposa uh, and Miss Wendy. So I just love that. I just um, saw that. I saw that Paul all commented. That was just so yes, sweet. Yes, so so very sweet. Um, so, you know, uh, and how it helped them uh, get through a loss in their life. So um, again, I, you know, I'm hearing about the connection, the care, the concern, um, and, and making sure that those elements uh, are there to help our young people. Um, Dr. Lorena, can you talk to us about ways that people should seek to get the care um, and advocate for themselves as well. You know, sometimes, it, you, you know, instead of saying, oh, this only affects the children or one person, you know, oftentimes, and I've covered this quite a bit from um, a, a story perspective, right? In the community, talking to people um, many, many years now, um, people will say everybody in that unit is impacted in some way. I How agree. can people better advocate for themselves and each other? Okay, again, um, got another favorite quote when we look at this. And again, it's never doubt by Margaret Mead, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. 
So again, it's coming together again in community. It's about partnership. I can't stray from that and how it's vital to improving our communities and advancing equity. Again, uh, when I look at our partners, it's not just local. It's, it's national partners. It's diverse stakeholders from government. It's education. It's healthcare. It's technology. It's public health. It's all of it together in an effort to do that. And when we, and again, when we do it, it we do it, I say, from the bottom up and, and create it from the community. Everything goes back. We keep coming back, but the community informs, the community directs, and they are our most important part. They are the key to all of this, okay, as we talk about it today. And, and I think, again, I mentioned this earlier, we can't do it by ourselves. I think together, uh, we can continue to break the stigma of addiction, but it, it's, it's a full court press with everybody pressing at the same time, but sometimes some are forward, some are backwards. And again, to support treatment and recovery for individuals with substance use disorder. So again, I'm going to say it's all in the family. It's a family affair. And it's the family of all these organizations. And again, we that are here on this conversation again today. All right. And, and I want to bring our counselors. Um, I want to bring everybody back who's been there, who's worked with our youth. Uh, so Emily and Steve, uh, boy, are we so thankful for your voices today, uh, being kind of a direct conduit of talking to our youth. Um, Emily, I'm going to come back to you and talk a little bit about that, you know, that connection. One person asked in the chat about what types of training. Uh, our mentors provided with? Do they attend in-person trainings? Um, and, you know, and how do you then develop the skill set to work with youth? Can you take that for us? Yeah, for sure. So mentors do attend in-person trainings, at least for Chicago. I would assume it's the same for most camps. And I think I love going to the trainings and I'm want to go because I want to learn how I can best help our youth. So I want to be given all the resources and trainings and learn from our experts, social workers, counselors, people that um, study addictions and substance abuse. They will inform me and educate me on best practices. And I really, going back to that, I want to show up for our kids and that's providing them my best self. So for me to be my best mentor for them and have that full generation of everybody being their best self, I need to have those resources, which is what the trainings provide. We learn about signs of suicide. We learn about how to talk to kids about addictions like Wendy shared. We learn all kinds of conversations and different topics that may come up at camp. And that's just kind of, and they're yearly and all the mentors attend them. How valuable was that training for you? You know, we oftentimes know we need training, we need certain skill sets for our job, but then sometimes when you encounter it, it's amazing how much you learn. Yeah, it really was. Um, I feel sometimes the word training can kind of have a negative connotation. I come from an HR department, so I know when people hear that they have to do employee trainings, there's some eye rolls, but really these camp trainings are so invested in being a good mentor and being a person that has resources to give to those kids. So it really comes down to they help us become better at what we do. So I feel like I would attend that anytime we're given that opportunity. All right. Thank you for that, Emily. Steve, I know you're still with us. And it was a word that stood out to me. It's one of the words that I actually had put in a special graphic of my special that I had a number of key words that went across the screen before we heard people's voices. And one of those words, Dr. Lorena said it, was stigma. Can you share with us the importance of breaking, you know, the stigma, letting people know that they're going to find comfort non-judgmentally in speaking up and speaking out about their experience and how perhaps that has helped you mentor and how you find you know, then therefore you can mentor others if you can take that for us or what you can tell us. Uh, I would say definitely breaking the stigma is a huge part. Um, I mean, obviously we, we all notice that, you know, times have changed and it's, it's no longer, I think, you know, I don't have to keep it hush hush, you yeah. know, I mean, it's, it's pretty, if it's right in our face, you can't ignore it. Um, so I think for me in, and other things that I do outside of camp, it's it's been very important for, for me to like, okay, let's just smash this stigma of this, that, the other thing. It's like, it doesn't serve us 
to to not talk about it you know it's like if you don't talk about it, it goes away kind of thing well it's it's not going away so let's just talk about it okay um and i just try to approach it with like that kind of anything in recovery camp mirror post or talking sharing whatever it is um i just try to approach it in that aspect where if you just talk about it and stop burying it or holding on to it it will get better you know um and it's it, 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 not only in my life, but I've seen it happen in many other people's lives who I've worked with, even kids at camp. Yeah. I mean, when they just open up, you know, the transformation that happens is, uh, for me personally, it's just like, holy cow. Um, it's very, uh, it's just very powerful, you know, and, and why wouldn't you want to see that, you know, in somebody else's life, you know? Oh, and yeah. indeed, indeed. Thank you for that, Steve. Mm. Hey, I Jen, want, can I jump in real quick? I just oh, wanted yes. to say, yes, Dr. Lorena, I just wanted to say, I actually went to camp. The mm. best thing I ever did. And, and again, for those that are, are looking again as funders or really to see, I went to camp up close and personal. I was mm. impressed by the mentors. The young people were honest. They were direct. And it was just probably one of the most fulfilling uh, opportunities that I had and it was so real and it was so real and it just put a whole and, and these are these are children these are young people these are are individuals and and they're and no one is the same so you don't have this cookie cutter response mm -hmm. as the mentor all right but I, I just found it just so enlightening to have the opportunity to actually go and 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 see taste touch smell camp so and first uh, again, for yourself Yes. You were there. Um, and, and I like that you said it. it wasn't just some response. I mean, it sounds to me like really youth can go and be themselves. Yes. And, you know, and sometimes we just need, uh, you know, uh, just a way to just say, I'm not being judged or I can just be me and it can flow. Um, so I wanted to give an opportunity for um, each one of our wonderful panelists to say uh, a, a brief closing remark. Uh, and that can be in the context, of course, of the, the me lasting message that you want to be left here today in terms of moving this particularly um, poignant conversation forward. Would love your takeaway. Wendy, gonna start with you. Hmm. So I um, frame a lot of what I do around the belief that everybody has a need to be seen and heard and supported and loved. And um, I think so many of our youth go through their daily lives not experiencing those things. And when, as everybody has already said, when you can see them be their true selves at camp and be honest, you know, they're not keeping their stuff stuffed down. Um, it's going to come out somehow. And it, you know, isn't often healthy if it's stuffed down in there, like Stephen said. And um, when you can give youth the opportunity uh, for them to be their true selves and to grow in who that person is for themselves and be a part of their lives as a mentor. You are, mentors are changing the trajectory of children's lives. And, you know, you can do that as a mentor, you know, and you come to camp and trained and all of that, but you can do that in a lot of other ways. You can, you can support of families by letting them know about camp. You can support camp by, you know, I have youth groups that'll get things together and, you know, little encouragement bags that, you know, they never interact with the campers. But, you know, I always say to our campers, there's people who care about you that don't even know you. And that's important for them to know that they're a part of a bigger community. And I'm just, I'm so grateful to be just a small part in that really important community. That's wonderful. Wendy, uh, something that I want to make sure as a note that we don't forget, perhaps even Mary can tell us this at the end after we've gone around. Uh, I do want to make sure this person's question gets addressed about any activities 
uh, that are surrounded around relationship building with parents when they begin a recovery program. So let's keep that on our radar and we'll make sure we get that answered for you. Uh, the three C's are in our chat. I'm making sure that all of our housekeeping is done as we go around. Uh, we're gonna be providing these resources and a link to you know where you can find those as well. Um, wanna make sure that I get to Emily and Steve. Emily, your takeaway for us and then Steve, we're coming to you. I wish I could just echo everything Wendy said, but um, my experience with camp has been truly amazing. I'm grateful for everything that Aluna does and that they provide Camp Mariposa to youth across the nation. Um, I feel honored to be able to be a mentor to get to know these children. And I think it's just one person doing an action that can really change the world. And while I know that mentors offer a lot and provide services to our youth, I really believe that they changed my life as well and that it's a two-way street. And even though sometimes we're giving our time and resources, they're doing a lot for us too. So I'm very grateful to be a part of this organization. All right. Beautifully said. Thank you very much, Emily. Um, three, the three, well, the, I should say the seven C's, and I call them today the 14 C's because you guys had so much to add to it. Uh, the C's are also in the chat. Uh, we're going to keep that chat going. This is going to be reposted as we keep rolling. Steve, your takeaway today. Wow. Um, yeah, everybody's so eloquent. I'm just like, ah, I don't know what to say. Um, you sound but great. Just, Your message is so poignant, Steve. Yes, it's just uh, the, the importance of the community. And and my takeaway is like, it's it's tremendous to see the, all I literally have to do is just give a little bit, like just listen, you know? And if that's all that takes, that, that one child, the camp or... Or, or somebody else is, is just like, I listen to them for two minutes and, and they're, they feel better. Um, then that's, that's, that makes it worth it to me like so much. Like I've had experiences that obviously I could not get into or else I will break down um, where kids are just like, can you just give me a hug? And hmm. Having kids of my own, it's just like, yeah, I can give you a hug. I can give you a hug all day, you know. I wish I could hug you all day, you know. Um, so yeah, that's the takeaway. Is that is it's just thinking those 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 little things, like the smallest thing, makes a difference um, in anyone's life, a child's life, and, and another person's life, an adult, whoever. Um, just just making that effort and, and showing up, and I am very grateful that I'm a part of the Illumina Network. Well, and I take and I take away from what you're saying is that it's it's the even the smallest of things that matter and attention to that detail and a care of another person um, and how that is very life changing as well. Often people will say no one listened or someone wasn't listening, and you're echoing, I believe, um, not to take your words away, but adding to that that you're saying being a good listener is something it sounds to me like you've been able to do. Uh, Want to get to Dr. Lorena before oh, uh, we go and do our final housekeeping. Okay. My, as I listen to what everyone has said, and I think of what came to mind was touching lives, making ripples, because that's what we do. We touch their lives and it has this ripple effect. And that's what a Luna does. And, and all those 18 places, I think Wendy mentioned that they are. So I think all of us should reach out. I'm not gonna sing and touch somebody's life and be a part of this great effort. So again, thanks for the opportunity to participate. And I just want to thank um, everyone. Attendees will also receive a link, it says, with uh, this information where you can find it and how you can share it. Um, I, I work with, with groups, organizations, but most of all, I've spent uh, now over 30 years working in the community to uh, help uh, people have a voice um, for their particular issues, matters, uh, things happening in their community. Um, and there are so many things happening that we must be able to have a voice and figure out a way that sometimes we can make something better. And so um, this is an opportunity for me uh, that I was so happy to take to be able to share with you to talk about how we can support our youth, nothing more precious in our lives and their families. So I thank you for allowing me to um, 
you know, moderate this conversation. Uh, everyone, thank you for what you do because you are the ones that make our communities. You are the glue and you're the ones that give that support to our communities. We can't thank you enough. I'm going to turn things back over to uh, to Mary now. You can certainly find me uh, at PHL 17, uh, doing one of many things uh, on the air, behind the scenes as a community affairs manager. Um, but also, please tune in to In Focus. These are the topics we cover, Saturdays at 6.30 a.m. and Sundays at 1 o'clock, and the many specials that I, I um, put on the air about topics like this. And it's all about folks in our community um, making it the best it can be. So thank you. Thank you, Jennifer, and, and thanks to all of you. Um, Got chills listening to it. So uh, it's definitely a powerful conversation. Thanks, Stephen, Emily, Lorena, and Wendy. Um, you know, we we wouldn't have the outcomes and the impact that we've had without, and we continue to have without all of the amazing Camp Mariposa team members throughout the country and up in Toronto now. And um, you know, you you really are um, transforming lives. So um, it's it's just we are honored to do the work with you. And thanks to each of you for taking the time to attend today. Great conversation in the chat and we will be sending out a recap email with all the links um, you know following this and the recording you can access so please um, I think the message is that you know we can all do something so get involved if you can we appreciate it have a good rest of your day everybody thanks thank everybody. you